leaving my brother's place the other day, I thought, I'm gonna bring a couple of these batteries home and test them. So this is the worst one that wasn't popped. So the, the little vent at the, t the top wasn't popped, but it was the worst bulged one. What I'm gonna actually do is, I'm gonna capacity test these cells, but we'll charge them up, we'll discharge them, see what capacity they've got. We've got the old thermal camera here so we can run the, the thermal camera over it. And I can do it safely. I work in here and I can watch them constantly. So and Mr. Puffy over here is 3.3 volts. These cells here, 3.3 volts. These cells here, about half a volt. So these ones for self-discharging, we're going to, maybe we'll try and charge and have a look at what the capacity is. Uh, new there are 100 amp hours. It'd be interesting to see what it still contains. Radio tube has got to charge the battery up a little bit first. It was just a little bit low to actually run properly. It's now done uh, almost 1.8 amp hours. So yeah, it's doing two amps, just over two amps. So just under an hour of charging it's done so far. I thought I'd come over and check it. We've got the iCharger X8 is about 33, 34, 35 degrees. And the battery behind it, you can't even see. So if we sort of swing that over that way, and I'm trying to record with the device as well, there's no heat at all in that battery. You can see the red dot there on the battery. In order to do this safely, or at least as safe as possible, I'm setting this to 100 degrees, or maybe even 80 degrees. And that should give me an alert when it gets too hot. I'll do it. Okay. Up to the buzzer, turn the buzzer on. Get out of that. Hey, that's plenty hot. Unplug it, take it over. Well, that's pretty neat. I like that as a feature. We are now on day two, the end of day two, and this is the third charging session. Session. And we've got 24 and a half amp hours that's gone into the batteries and 11 hours and 41 minutes today. So that's 24, I think we did seven yesterday afternoon and another four amp hours in the morning. So we've done, well, we'll make something up, 30, 32, 33 amp hours into the battery so far. The battery voltage has not come up very much. I think it's come up from 3.4 volts. Um, I am regretting not getting a bigger set of verniers to actually measure to see if that's actually swelling and going back down again. But the battery itself is not leaking anywhere. I put it on a bit of white tissue paper so we can see it. And it looks like there's something there, but that's just the shadow. So come back in the morning. We'll just pull that out now. Uh, just make sure we've got an accurate amount. Pull the charger out. We'll come back in the morning and hit it again. We'll turn that off as well. There we go. And it is very much night time on the Friday night. It's discharge day. We still don't have any heat. We are, and this is the fourth charging session, 2.8 amp hours, but we've dropped to 0.6 of an amp. So she's slowed right down. She's almost at the 3.6 volts, what she should be. So I think I'm gonna call it very shortly. Now we're gonna move all this out into the garden and continue our test. Taking a look underneath the battery. Uh, I'm not sure if that's liquid coming out of the battery. Certainly there's something on the bottom of the battery there. It might just be soaking up from when it was uh, failing last time, not sure. But at least we've got some sort of indication. I'll report. Well, how about that? We caught it. So let's take it outside. You're going to have to do your best not to judge my setup. Uh, there's a road about 50 metres away behind me. Uh, we've got a nice big concrete wall. We got it on a barbecue plate. Uh, and I've wet all the ground down with the hose. I've got the hose sitting there that you can hardly see. It's watering the banana trees that it looks like they're dying. 
Uh, I got two big battery batteries. So they're almost fully discharged. They're just under 12 volts. Running into there, running into the iCharger X6, uh, X8, sorry. Got the balance leads on, the negative and positive on. We're doing 30 amps, which is about, about a third of what they factory tested the battery at. So they did it at 1C. This is a third of a C. Uh, and then we've got it back to input, so regen mode. Into there. Oh, yeah, regen in. Okay, cool. Discharge. Yes. 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 Get in. Doing 30 amps. I realize we all have vastly different uh, descriptions of as safe as possible, but this is as safe as I can make this in this location. And then we've got the battery happening. It's been running for about seven minutes so far and done four amp hours discharge. So we're gonna let it run. I am gonna sit here, out here or around here for the entire three or four hours that it takes to discharge this battery. And we're gonna see what capacity you get out of a bloated LFP cell or lithium iron phosphate. The first very boring hour has passed. We've got no heat. Well, actually we've got the heat in the cables. We haven't got any heat in the battery there at all. And we've got, what have we got? 29 amps going in, 30 amps. Oh, sorry, coming out. And 29.64 amp hours that has come out. Top right hand corner there. Sorry about all the grass, I've been whippersnipping just on an hour with absolutely no heat. Well, we're at two hours, so a little bit more than two hours. 64 amp hours out of a 100 amp hour battery. Remembering this is one third of its tested C rate when it's new and practically no heat. There's a little bit of warmth there, but certainly nothing to worry about as yet. Those cables, it's a different matter altogether. The sun is in a terrible position at the moment in the sky. We have got almost three hours, three minutes off three hours, and it's still going strong, I guess you'd say. You can see the cables are nice and hot but the battery itself is not much hotter than ambient temperature. So that's disappointing. That's gonna make for a boring video. We're gonna to have to step my game up a little bit and see if we can get a good thumbnail out of this battery. We got 95, 96 amp hours, three hours and 12 minutes. We'll have a look at the thermal camera. I don't know how long it has been off for. That battery looked like it was starting to get a little bit warm. And I can definitely feel it. It's, it's not hot, but it's, yeah, it's not hot. It's not as hot as the wall in the sun there. The plate below it is much cooler. Have a look on the nappy underneath. There's dirt on it, but there's no there's no liquid leaking or anything like that. Well, Chibbers, that was the biggest disappointment I've had. I expected an epic thumbnail of this battery. Um, going skyward in just a trail of fire behind it but unfortunately that didn't happen uh, look i know it's stained i know it's bad to use it and continue to use it but bloody hell these things are resilient so that was like 96 amp hours i think from memory this one was beside it and that was 96 amp hours as well i did not i haven't tested those two yet but these three were from cell one so these ones were self-discharging i think they did 150 amp hours uh, discharging in a certain period of time, in a short period of time. Uh, and these, I think these three cells, which is cell one, which we replaced here, these ones were started all of the problems with this battery. 
yet that one is still 83.81 amp hours that one is 79 amp hours and that one is 77 amp hours so that is a very unexpected result and oh, i really want to get this one and pull it apart i wonder what it looks like inside Sometimes I wish I had more than an iPhone to do your videos. It doesn't appear to have punctured that case. What do you reckon? 10,000 likes. <laughs> Shoot for the moon. And I do a disassembly video of that. I wonder how I pull that apart safely. I wonder if I pull apart something that's not so bloated and not so under pressure first and see if we can take a look at what's inside that battery. It even looks like it's bent out a little bit up the top there. It's curved out just a little bit. Anyway, tubers, thank you very much for tuning in. And honestly, I can't do this without your likes and subscribe. So if you made it this far, smash that like button, leave a bloody comment because the YouTube algorithm sucks. And, and these videos cost me 10 times more to make in time and, um, I guess you'd say effort than I ever get back from the YouTube algorithm lately.